Hello and welcome back. Today's video is going to be about Amazon MQ. It's a message broker service and it fits well if your application uses formal messaging protocols like MQP. It supports two engine types, ActiveMQ and RabbitMQ. Today we are going to discuss about RabbitMQ. This is what we are going to build today. We are going to create a RabbitMQ message broker and a Lambda function. Then set up the message broker as the event source for the Lambda. We will also store the RabbitMQ credentials in Secret Manager. It's a simple setup. Let's get into AWS console and start building this. Okay, so we are in the AWS console. First, let's start by creating the RabbitMQ message broker. So I'm switching to the Amazon MQ console. And here you have two engine types. We are going to select RabbitMQ today. And we have two deployment modes, uh, cluster deployment as well as single instance. Cluster deployment helps in high availability that should be used in production instances. And as this is demo, I'm using single instance mode. Broker name can be anything. I'm going to call this as RabbitMQ. And instance type, I'm going to go with micro today because that is the least available instance type. And for the RabbitMQ access, you can specify the username and password for the direct web console access. And under additional settings, you will find the options for network settings as well as selecting a specific engine version for your broker. I'm going to go with the latest engine version. And under network security, I'm selecting public access here. And again, if in case you're going with a production instance, please do select private access. And by default, it is put into a VPC. In this case, we are selecting the default VPC. If you want, you can create your own VPC and put in that specific VPC. And we default, by default, it's also encrypted. The messages are encrypted. And the maintenance and uh, the updates are maintained by AWS itself. We have to just choose a preferable maintenance window. Next. And it will show us all the selected options. You can review the options once and create the broker. So this will approximately take up to 20 minutes. So in the meantime, let's go ahead and create a Lambda function. And let's create a Lambda function. I'm going to call this as MQ Lambda. And I'm going to go with the runtime as Python 3.8. I'm going to select the default execution rule. Anyways, we have to come back and edit few permissions in the rule. So before doing that, let's create the secret. So the secret is used to store the username and password of the RabbitMQ uh, console that we just created. So we are going to select other type of secret and store the username and password as a key value pair. And username and password. This will be used by the Lambda function to access your RabbitMQ broker. So in password and the password that you selected for the RabbitMQ broker. Save this. You have to give the secret name. I'm going to call this as MQ secret. And tags are optional. Next and then save the secret. By default, rotation is enabled in the secret. You can leave the default values there. Okay, once we have the secret, let's go back to our Lambda function and get into permissions and let's update the role. So there will be a default role selected with some default permissions for the CloudWatch uh, logs. There we are going to add some additional permissions, which is going to allow us access the RabbitMQ uh, related methods as well as the secret. 
So the first thing we are going to do is add the out of the box Amazon MQ full access uh, policy. These are the permissions that will get added. And the second thing is we are going to create an inline policy which is going to allow access to the secret. So we are going to select secrets manager and under actions it's enough to just allow get secret value and we are going to allow this to a specific resource. Let's copy the secret ARN which we just created and paste it here. Alright, so review the policy and give the policy a name. I'm going to call this a secret access and create the policy. So that policy will automatically get added to your role. So with that, we have our role ready. And let's do a minor update to the code. I'm not doing any specific functionality here. So I'm just going to print the event so that let's see how the event looks like and how the message is formatted. So I'm just doing JSON dumps of the event. Right now let's go back and check if our RabbitMQ instance have been provisioned. It's still in progress. I'm going to pause the video and come back. All right, so it's been almost 20 minutes. Now we have our instance running. So if you get into the RabbitMQ instance here, you will see the endpoint for the web console access. So as you can see, it's been put into a VPC, but we have enabled public access. So you should be able to access the web console outside of the VPC. So let's do that now. So this is the console. You can use the username and password that you use to create the RabbitMQ instance and login. So once logged in, it will look like your traditional RabbitMQ instance. The only difference is it's managed by AWS itself. And within this, uh, you will see the admin user as well as your virtual host will be present here. If you want, you can create a new virtual host, but for this demo, I'm going to go with the default virtual host. And under queues, let's create a new queue. I'm going to call this as a demo queue. And if you want, you can add additional arguments to the queue, like the message TTL or dead letter exchange, or even you can create exchanges. It will work exactly as your traditional RabbitMQ service. And we have created the queue. Now let's get in, uh, get back into AWS console and set up the trigger for the Lambda. So I'm in the Lambda console and here I'm going to add a trigger. So in here, the source is going to be Amazon MQ. And let's select the MQ broker that we created. So in our case, it's going to be RabbitMQ. That's the broker name. And let's activate the trigger. And the batch size, I'm going to reduce this to one. So uh, our Lambda function will be triggered for each message that is being received. And the queue name, in our case, it's demo queue. And virtual host, we went with the default host. So I'm just going to give the slash because that's the default uh, host. And for basic auth, we have to select the secret that we just created. And you also have an option to add some filters so that you can filter the events and opt to listen to only specific messages. And let's add the trigger. All right, so once the trigger is added, it's immediately ready to use because we have enabled the uh, activation checkbox. And here, let's try publishing a new message. So in here, you have options to specify headers or some additional properties. For now, we are going to just add a payload. I'm going to just send this as a test message and let's publish the message.
So once published, you should be able to see this in our CloudWatch logs uh, because we just printed the message. So I'm going to go back to AWS console and get into monitor and view CloudWatch logs. So under this, you should see a new uh, stream and here you should see the event. So as you can see, the message is in a specific format. You will see the event source ARN, that is our broker ARN, and then the queue name. And within that, you will see a list of messages. Since we set the batch size to one, you will receive a trigger for each message and you will see the data here. So the data is base64 encoded. Uh, to see the actual message, you can decode it. So I'm using the online decoder. And you can see the decoded message. So uh, this is very simple setup. Uh, hope you found this useful. If you have any questions, uh, please leave them in the comments below. See you soon in the next video. Thank you.